Hi, um, good evening everybody. This is Pastor David again for another session of um, Easy Dharma for Difficult Times. And today we will be talking a little bit about anger and aggression and how to combat it. So while we wait for more people to come on, let me load my page first and uh, let's see. Um, Yes, it is. Um, okay, I see myself now. <laughs> That's cool. I don't see anybody, but it's okay. Um, for those who watch this later, there will be our waste of day is going to be on May seventh, and uh, it's going to be streaming live uh, because in, t in anticipation for most likely an extension to the MCO. Sorry, guys. So it'll be from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. That was a commercial break before we actually start. <laughs> so hi, hi, Mr. Lam. We're talking about um, anger and aggression today. So um, we appreciate any feedback. Um, the last one we were talking about, what did we talk about last year? Jeez. Oh yeah, cutting attachment, how to cut attachment while having it Without giving it up, sorry. Without giving it up. Yeah, that was interesting. And um, I, I thank you for all the feedback um, that you've, whoever is, who, you know, on the last time, it was, it was nice. And um, today is kind of, I don't know, it just dawned on me, you know. You see, the last one we were talking about attachment, you know, things that we like, situations that we like, people that we like, people, you know, objects that we like. So now it's the other end of the spectrum, which is um, people, things, and situations we don't like. And that's the thing. Um, so it's the other end of the spectrum that we are dealing with this time. It's actually another aspect of attachment, attachment and aversion, you know. Uh, hi, Yinping. Thank you very much for joining. And... Uh, so today we'll be talking about um, anger and uh, aggression, which I would be, I think some of you guys know because <laughs> I told you personally. So what happened is, um, well, let's wait a little bit more. We have Pastor Albert, hello. We have uh, Tata N Ong, hello, from uh, Ipo. I think you're in Ipo, right? Yeah. And um, I think that's just about it. So... Anger, mm, angry bird. Well, uh, in the classic textbook definition of anger, it's actually about um, when we don't like a situation, when we don't like a person, when we don't like an object. And um, why? Because in our mind, we're not seeing its good qualities. So it is a distorted view. We are seeing it for its bad, inherent. What we see, lah. Okay, what we see is exaggerated. The the bad qualities of a person, the bad qualities of a situation, the bad qualities of an object. Just like attachment, but this is the reverse. So we are seeing that, and when we see it, we don't like it, and we wish to part from it as soon as possible. Okay, it's the other way around because for attachment, we want, for, we want it to last forever if possible. You know, we want it to last as long as possible as, and forever because we like it. But in this case, it's a situation, a person or a place, a, a place block, a, a place or so possible, uh, object, person or situation, okay, that is uh, we don't like. Okay, very early on. Hello, hi Jerry. Welcome. And uh, hello Martin. And we have already a very early question. Is attachment to one's ego one of the causes of anger? Uh, yes. It's, it's not so much as attachment to ego. It is actually, um, it's, it's us having this uh, perception of our ego that we, they, they truly exists. Because I, what, what, what I mean by this is because we, we think 
on a level where we, our, our person, uh, our ego exists, and that's why we want to protect it. We want to nurture it. We want to, you know, we want to take care of it. We want to, we want to enjoy the things that it, it wants, it likes, it has, and then we want, we want to avoid situations. We want to avoid uh, people. We want to avoid objects that we don't like. Hence. It creates a situation where um, we, we create the causes for anger. Anger is is it can be you see anger is not something so straightforward. Okay, anger it, anger and aggression. I have to really go into it. Hi Sharon. Hi. Uh, anger has many levels of it, has many durations of it because you see anger could be just as simple as you know you you, um, you take a stick and you hit me. And um, for most people, okay, I'm no, I'm, I'm sure there are some people, you know, they, they can control or they have no anger, but most of us immediate jolt will be, we feel pain, and then our immediate reaction is a little bit of anger, retaliation sometimes, and um, or some we just get annoyed. That is anger. There's a small split second of anger that will come up, and uh, for a normal person. A reaction to quick harm. Sometimes our our reaction is so quick, we don't we can't even control it. So we we get annoyed, we show a face, we shout back, we scream, we um we hit back. <laughs> I'll hit back. <laughs> so we hit back. We retaliate. So that's our our is an expression of aggression, expression of anger. Okay. Later, we have to go into why it is, um, it is uh, distorted or it is what do you call it exaggerated. It is born out of exaggeration because later I'll explain a little bit. All right, because it's very much related to our situation right now with the MCO, with the COVID virus, the COVID nineteen virus, and people's reaction to it. It's very obvious. Okay, so basically, anger can be usually it's 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 a re, it's a reaction to something we don't like. It's an aversion, basically. So what happens is, um, for most people, with a healthy or rather with a normal upbringing, a normal situation where they have a comfortable surroundings. Uh, good people, good family, good friends. Um, so what happened is uh, maybe a comfortable lifestyle, maybe everything is provided. So things are pretty fine, pretty comfortable. So the, uh, the opportunity or rather the, the situation, the scenario where anger comes up may not be you know, very apparent. It's just on, on, only on small occasions, on a few occasions. But... Um, let's face it, lah. Life has never been for everyone. It cannot be so nice for everybody. It's just a few lucky, a few lucky, a lucky few. Sorry. And um, but for some people, what happened is again and again they get disappointed. Again and again, maybe they were brought up in a difficult situation where they had to struggle. Maybe their parents were not nice. Maybe the siblings were, were, you know, were not nice, were, were rivals, were, were bullies, were, you know, aggressors who, who are aggressive towards you. And you were caught up in a situation where people are not nice to you, people treat you badly, you were taken advantage, you felt helpless, you felt no control, you felt, you felt resentment. Initially, resentment and it builds. You see, anger, initial, most of the time, anger at the beginning is just a reaction. But what happens is when, it, when, when, when situations repeat again and again, resentment builds. And then anger goes in deeper and deeper and deeper. So what happens is when we have a lot of situations over time, over the years, this anger builds up in us. And that's where it becomes, over time, it becomes uncontrollable. And so, 
that's where, you know, that's where we lash out. We are bitchy. We are not nice. We are aggressive. We are extremely aggressive with our colleagues, our family members, our friends. We are bitchy. And we just say, oh, I'm straightforward. This is who I am. So whether, whether, you, whether you, you, you just take it or leave it, you know, for some, for some people. And then um, some people, they have, this is who I am. You have to accept me for who I am. If you don't, if you don't like, too bad. Because this is who I am. And they, they have demands on people. They're constantly putting demands on people. And they constantly have, expect people to perform according to how they see. So over time, this builds up. Anger builds up. This is a result of anger and it builds up even more because it feeds itself. Because at the base of anger is ignorance or, or non-awareness. I, I know uh, ignorance is uh, the more common term, and um, but it tend to make you feel like you know stupid or you're dumb, or it's based on stupidity or based on, you know. But the real meaning of it is non-awareness of how things really are, of how people really are, how situations really are. So, um, and that's where anger originally comes from, and it builds up. Okay, so what happens is why they allow it to build up that way is because they have not come to terms with the situation, come to terms with whatever bad situation they've experienced before doesn't really exist anymore, but they continue to relive it. They continue to relive it. And um, every day with people and, and with, with, with people who are nice, People who are colleagues, people who are just, you know, colleagues, people who are, you know, on the street, people who are human, they just meet. So they con continue to relive it, relive their bad childhood, bad experience. Sometimes it's just a bad experience, you know. So they, so they are aggressive, they are difficult, they are challenging, they are angry, they are loud, obnoxious. Okay, so we have more people come on. And uh, hi, Judy. Thank you for joining. Uh, you, what you say is, when you feel hurt over a situation, is that anger turned in? When you feel angry over a situation is... Uh, sorry, when you feel hurt over a situation, is anger turning? Not necessarily. Hurt is... Hurt is a form, it's, I don't think it's, it's disappointment, but it, hurt can turn to anger. Hurt doesn't begin with anger, ang being angry. Usually when people feel hurt, they get, they are disappointed. Uh, they emotionally um, perhaps put down, let down by someone they care about. A situation, since a situation usually involves people, I would think it involves people, in, perhaps in, in, in a situation where they cannot help it. So it involves perhaps, you know, um, their parents, perhaps it's a loved one, perhaps it's uh, a government, <laughs> perhaps it's authorities, perhaps it's a colleague, a friend. So, um, you know, it usually involves people one way or another, but perhaps a little bit more distant people, you know, like, like in a situation, an organization or in a company. I mean, for most people, the only situations usually involves either friends, loved one, families, or their workplace. You know, these three main places. So, um, or it could be, you know, like I said, like the government, the country, you know. So, what happens is uh, when they feel hurt, it doesn't, it doesn't, most people do not feel angry immediately, but it, when the hurt goes very deep in, it, it can turn to anger because... Yeah, especially when, when I experience when you are hurt repeatedly and it's deliberate by someone. For me, it's someone, you know, when it's rep repeatedly, uh, they, they take advantage or they deliberately say things that put you down over and over. Initially, it's hurt. Then it can turn to irritation, annoyance, anger. So I don't think it begins with anger. I think it ends up in anger because when it's repeated. So, I mean, this is in a scenario where it's normal when you haven't, when there's no. Oh, 
Hi, hi, I'm back again. <laughs> Sorry about that. It was a technical difficulty with um, perhaps I was rattling on too much. So, um, hi, Wei Ting. Hi, um, Sharon. You, what you said was fantastic. Sharon says, I feel that people who are angersub are usually deeply unhappy. You are right. That's what Rinpoche said. And uh, Rinpoche had said this. This is something that was told to Rinpoche, I think, by uh, his teacher, his art teacher. I can't remember her name, though. But um, Rinpoche, it was told to Rinpoche, and Rinpoche feels it, it's uh, correct. People who are angry, people who are angersome, they themselves are deeply hurt before. So hence I said angry, you know, when I, I came out of that scenario where, you know, they were hurt before and then they, they react in anger and then it builds up. You see, it always starts like that. And in the real world, it's impossible that you live a life where you're never disappointed. You never get hurt. You never get, um, you know, you, you never put in a situation where you get angry. It's impossible that you live in the real world unless you live on an island. Even when you're on an island, you can get angry with yourself, you know, if you don't have the right mindset. So what happens is, um, it, they, so everybody has some sort of life circumstances, situation, uh, whatever it is, you know, that happened to them that create the causes for them to be angry initially. And then it's their choice whether they want to continue on or not to build on the anger. Because a lot of us, what happens is um, we tend to relive it. That's the problem. And uh, most of the time when they relive the situation is uh, with others. That person is not trying to hurt us, but we see it. And we try. It's a, it's a self-protection mechanism. Okay, so... Why is that a self-protection mechanism? Is because that's how we see it. We, 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 we tend to view things exaggerated. It's this attachment. Where anger and aggression comes from is an over-exaggeration of negative qualities. And uh, hence, we, when we just see any sense of a person with a, a slight quality that can, that can potentially create, you know, make us, that anger us, hurt us, or whatever it is, and make us angry, we already lash out in retaliation. Many of the times, you know, it's not, it's not the person. It's just that we thought he would be like that. We thought she would be like that, but we already lashed out. That's the problem. LC Toy says, defensive to protect oneself. That's the bottom of it. We are always trying to protect ourselves. Always. We are trying to protect this ego. We are, we are trying to... And our, our surveillance, you know, this surveillance meaning how we perceive things, how we see people, how we interact with people. When we get any hint of someone attacking our ego, we already... You know, it's like a... It's what you call this, a, 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 a retaliation, a, a self-defense mechanism, self-protection mechanism where we, already at, we attack them before they could even you know, pose any danger. So a lot of the times, our anger is unjustified. We, all, we, we, all, we, we blew out of proportion. And the problem about it is that when each time we do it, it gets worse. Contrary to what some people say, oh, sometimes you just need to vent out your anger, express yourself, don't repress yourself. This is not a Madonna song. <laughs> um, actually, it's not so good, especially when it comes to anger, it comes to aggression, because each time you, you vent yourself, it builds up. It will build up. Because you have not gone to the source of it. And what's the source of it? It's our ego. And how do we get to it? Is that we have to... For Rinpoche, Rinpoche has given a teaching about it. And he, he pinpoints this. There's two, things, there's two things that comes to mind. Two teachings that comes to mind from Rinpoche. One of them is... One of them is... Um, 
when we are very extremely happy. This is, this is from the, the teaching called Enemy Within. When we are very, you know, like when we get a gift, when we are praised, we are so happy. We jump up and down. We clap our hands. We, we smile and we, you know, for, for, small, for small things. Get ready because we, you can go the other way around. We can get very upset, very angry. When we get very upset, we become angry. So when we allow ourselves to be extremely attached to praise, uh, when we want people to praise us, when we want people to uh, accept us, some of us want accept, some of us crave acceptance, some of us crave to be praised, some of us want some sort of attention from people, and we, we do whatever we can to get it. We plot to get it. We do so many things, we, we you know, we uh, uh, smile, we be un uncharacteristically friendly. Hi, how are you? What are you doing? Do you want to give? Should I carry your bag for you? Should I do this for you? Should I do that for you? Because, because they're craving for it. They want it. That's the thing. It's huge attachment. Huge attachment to be praised. Huge attachment for company because they have not gone to the source. The reason why they are not, they're doing all that is just temporary because the moment they are triggered, they get really angry and they are not your friend anymore. They, that friendliness will melt away and then they will lash out. So when you have a lot of attachment towards praise, Towards your face, you know, in Chinese we call face as in as our uh, how what was how do you translate face <laughs> face as in you know um, as in as in as in your reputation, your pride, you know, you know when we have huge attachment, we cannot be embarrassed. The moment we are embarrassed, we our face turn and we retaliate. There are some people, you know, you can never embarrass them when you, you cannot put them in a spot because when you put them in a spot, they will get very angry. And a lot of people, you see, there are some people who, when they get angry, they lash out immediately, and then they are fine. So they, they have anger, but not much. There are some people, when, they, when they, are, they are very angry, you have no hint, they will be smiling at you. They will be joking with you. But oh my God, they will plot, they, they, they will plot somehow to get you back when you least expect it. There are some people like that. So there, there, are, there are many types of people and how they express their anger and aggression. And then, of course, I know that there's, this is, this is, this is uh, the normal uh, type of aggression and anger. Then there's also the passive-aggressive type. Passive-aggressive is like those who, who are passive, meaning they don't express it in aggression or words or expression, but they, but they, they become silent. They don't want to talk to you. They refuse to talk to you. They just keep quiet. They stay away. Or they refuse to cooperate. For example, in a company or in an organization or in a family, you know, the usually, uh, you know, especially children. <laughs> so what happens is, what they they cannot, they definitely cannot, you know, if they throw a tantrum, the parents would discipline them and say, no, no, that why, you know. <laughs> but so what? How they retaliate? How they show the aggression? They don't refuse to, to eat. They refuse to do how, uh, whatever the parent tells them. That's one form of aggression. That's one form of anger. So there's many types. Okay, hi, hi, Ms. Uh, Yu Sing. And uh, you have a question here. Is annoyance a milder form of anger? Anger is anger. La. Annoyance is an expression of anger. And um, it depends how where it's expressed and how it's expressed and to, to see how mild it is. Because for some people, when they are annoyed, they can do very drastic things when they're annoyed. It's very different for different people, okay? Because I've come across people who say, you know, they, they, they scream bloody murder and foul words and they kick you and all that. Oh, I'm, I was just annoyed. You have not seen me when I'm angry yet. <laughs> It depends. So it, as I, I, it really depends on a person. But um, all of us get annoyed. Lah. 
from time to time. We are getting annoyed. It's normal because um, we have expectation. We have distorted view of people. That's why that's why it's it's said to be attachment and and all that and anger and all this is called disturbing emotions, uh, afflictive emotions, as Rumichi calls it. It's because we do not view people correctly. And when we don't view people correctly, we don't view situations correctly, we don't view objects correctly, we have a distorted view of it. So we see it for how it affects us, how it affects our ego, how it pleases us. We always view see it from our point of view. It's hard for us to see from other people's point of view. And that's why there's this discrepancy, disparity. We, we come up with all sorts of reaction from anger to attachment to, you know, so that's not I mentioned, Rimishi, the, the two teaching, right? I go back to it. When you have extreme attachment, happiness for, for things that you like, um, praise, gifts, um, all the good things, you know, when you have, if you're very, very happy, expect to be very upset on the other end of the spectrum when we don't have it. When we are not praised, when we are insulted, when we, are, when we sometimes people are just cracking a joke, but we feel extremely insulted, because normally we're used to people praising us. We want them, we crave for it. So when we don't have it, when and we don't get the gift that we want, we don't get the praise that we want, we don't get the, you know, the reaction from people the way we want it, we get extremely annoyed, and it builds up to anger. Okay, depends. Sometimes it's a split second for most of us. Okay, here we go. Mr. Lum, here's what Mr. Lum says. When an angersome person habituates anger into themselves, then this person can be dangerous. What are some pointers that you, adv you advise on how to deal with such characters, especially when they are habituated to be angry frequently? Okay, Mr. Lum, uh, that is a very good question, how to deal with angry people. With a lot of patience, with a lot of kindness, to be honest. It depends how close you are. It depends how close you can be with this person. It really depends. If you can get closer, then you can reach out deeper as in to what they really, really, you know. Um, for, because usually the anger is, there's a source of it. For different people, it's different. What Rinpoche used to say is that... Uh, for people who are angersome, who cannot control their anger, it's because in their lives, they have not taken responsibility of their previous actions. Perhaps earlier, in a, I'm not meaning not taking responsibility, meaning a major thing that happened in the past, they have not done something that they should have done, or they've not made themselves who they should be. Because some people, they have high expectations of themselves. They, they wanted to be successful and whatever, and maybe they failed. And that failure could have resulted in, in a low self-esteem that is so low and so they're so hurt by it that they, it, it has turned to anger because that's, that's how people are, you know. So it really depends. So what happens is um, how do you deal with people who are ang angersome? If you're close to the person, you can reach out. If you're not close to the person, you have to be patient, but do not be a doormat. I do not recommend people being a doormat. In a sense, what, what does it mean by being a doormat? It doesn't mean that you shout back. I don't recommend that either, meaning you set your boundaries. Sometimes when people overreact, you have to tell them, please, do not, you know, especially if it's in public, in front of children, in front of family, in front of other people, you know, you have to tell them, please control yourself. Perhaps tell them, you know, um, personally, so that they don't, you know, embarrass themselves. Tell them, tell them nicely, tell them firmly, tell them, you know, with a lot of kindness, with a lot of patience. We have, and we also have to be what, mindful of how we tell people, we talk to people, because um, even for myself, you know, when I deal with difficult, I'm not perfect at it, I'm not really good at it, but um, I think the best way is when you ha when I watch how Rimichi deal with angry angersome people, I understand you have to do it with a lot of kindness, a lot of concern, so that they feel it and they will not get offended by it. And um, so the scenario and situation is important how you deal with them. All right. 
Okay, hello Yiling, welcome from, uh, I think you must be in America right now. Um, hope everything's fine, Yiling. Um, Chung, Chung says this in response to Yu Sing. I would think so, similar repulsive energy annoyance can be useful short term, for example, when we shoo away flies to that they do not contaminate our food, for example. But when it comes becomes habitual or long term, and worse, it amplifies and it becomes a very false and negative projection. Okay, that's interesting. And uh, Yi Ling says this, coming to terms with whatever is the cause of anger will reduce it. Does it also come with acceptance as in your earlier talk? Very good, Yi Ling. Uh, Many of the times, uh, you see, what we were talking about is the past for these people. So, in in order to for help for people to deal with whatever they did or did not do, or react or did not react to a particular situation that they had regrets or whatever emotions they have um, built up and pent up and it has turned to anger. Uh, it. They cannot do anything anymore as in as in they couldn't have altered the past right so when you cannot alter the past you have to come to terms with it you have to come to acceptance of it and make peace and what what does what does that really mean they have to deal and face of it because sometimes they don't want to face it they're embarrassed they feel bad about it they don't want to talk about it. Perhaps usually when people, a lot of people, um, when uh, when they, there are situations where it's so pent up, it's because they have they have not dealt with it. They don't want to face it. They don't want people to know. They don't want to to you know. So it, it's become this mass of emotions from the past. Usually is resentment, but originally perhaps it was something else. Perhaps it was hurt. Perhaps it was regret. It could be any of these, you know. So. Whatever it is, coming terms, acceptance is very important. Actually, for any of our, our, our uh, emo- negative emotions that we have, but especially when it comes to anger and to, to cut at it. Okay? So, um, the, other th- the other teaching that Rimshi gave regarding anger... One of them was, was called the enemy within and is, is to do with attachment and aversion. Because aversion is one form of, one expression of aversion is anger. So when you have a lot of attachment, you definitely have a lot of, uh, you will get very upset, you get very angry easily. Just like where you get very happy and excited when, when things go well for you. So it's two sides of the coin, of a single coin. You know, there's one side of the coin which is happy, one side of the coin is not happy. Same thing. So this, this is a teaching from Rinpoche. Then another teaching Rinpoche was I mentioned earlier a little bit is actually that people who have who are angersome uncontrollably is because they have not taken responsibility. So there's an aspect of them that they have not dealt with. They have not taken responsibility means you haven't come to terms with it. You haven't done any, perhaps you haven't make, made amends to a, per, a particular person. Perhaps it was it could be any of that. It, perhaps they have not done something that they should have done, that they, you know, that mattered a lot to a loved one. Perhaps they had disappointed someone very, very badly, and um, you know, so the regret is huge, humongous. That for some people it turns to anger, or some people they are just, you know, um, callous. And what happens is when they they are callous. And they a bit selfish. When people are callous, usually are self-absorbed. I won't say selfish. Self-absorbed. There's a difference between selfish. Selfish is general. You know, we always think about self selfish. So self-absorbed means they always, they most of the actions, the sum of the actions in a day, it's always about themselves. Even when they want to do for someone else, it's because that person benefits you. So a, a lot of self-absorption is always about themselves, what, what they're going to do, how they feel, where they want to go, what they want to do, um, what, they, what can I get, you know, what they, can they get, you know, it's, what can they get out of a situation, what can they get out of a person, me, 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 me. It's a huge me, 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 me. All of us have me, 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 by the way. So, you know, especially those watching us. 
watching me, sorry, me included, of course, we are about me, but a self-absorbed person tends to be a little bit more. So what happens is, um, oh, got some other. So when we, when we are very self-absorbed, um, it, it could be from that. I, I've, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I don't apologize. Uh, let me see. Acceptance. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely important. I got a question here that was kind of interesting. Mr. Ch I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not sure you're a Mr. because you, you don't have a, there's a girl's face. So I guess it's a Miss, Miss Chia. What's the difference between anger and wrath? What's the basis for deities and higher beings to act in a wrathful way? Oh, a very good one. Yes, very good one. Okay, wrath. And anger in English, I think, doesn't mean much difference. But in, in, in the Buddhist sense, we tend to use wrath in a, as a more respectful way to refer to a particular energy of a, an enlightened energy that's expressed by enlightened beings, expressed by attained beings, um, to, uh, to, um, to express extreme compassion. Rimaji calls it extreme compassion. I think it's also used by many lamas, extreme compassion, extreme care. So the closest definition of that would be like a mother who doesn't want her child to hurt himself. You know, the child is going to play with fire and the child thinks, oh, it's fun, you know, it, you know, but he's about to burn his finger and, and hurt himself. So the, the mother immediately say, no, stop that. So it, it's a burst of anger, a burst of wrath. Okay, the burst of wrath is concern, is care, okay? So, but that's not, that's not an enlightened being's wrath, actually. It's not. It's close, but it's not. An enlightened being is totally motivated by compassion, by no self, okay? A mother's one, there's a tinge of it. So what happens is, um, so for, in, 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 with, with, uh, with respect, the word wrath is used, instead of anger, because the motivating factor is compassion and care. All right? So when the motivating com uh, uh, factor is compassion and care, so it may superficially look like mother looks fierce, want to scold a child, but the child's about to hurt himself. So the end result is benefit. You see, when we, have, when we are angry at someone who is doing something bad, and... Um, more, sometimes, you know, when we, we, we tell someone and you see, some people don't care. You know, they, they don't care that you, you're concerned for them. They don't feel your concern. So what happens is they, they resist. So what, I, what I'm trying to say is that even when we are concerned to the best of our ability, we don't have 100% selflessness. So people may not fully believe us. So that's why, that's why when we deal with angry people, we have to be careful. Yeah, we have to be careful because we cannot use wrath on angry people. Never do that. I do not recommend it unless you attain. I don't, I don't think many attain people are watching me right now, but I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, forgive me. But if you're attained, then you can use wrath to benefit someone. If you, you're not... Try not to. I mean, of course, if you're a mother, you need to discipline your child. Yes, of course. But I'm talking of other people who are our, our peer, okay? Someone like a colleague or a relative of our age. If, you want, if someone is already angry and you, you'd want to scold them, you, don't you think it would be counter, counterintuitive, counter, counterproductive? They'll get more angry, you know? And you, because although your motivation is out of care, but does it really help? It doesn't. So our motivation cannot necessarily do, but attained beings can manifest that and that's why they are expressed in their, their form. So they are protector beings, enlightened protector beings like Dodi Shukden, like Pandan Lamo, Mahakala and so forth. They do manifest their wrath physically to show you their compassion. All right? All right, Chung says, uh, in, 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 by English language definition, wrath is extreme anger. 
Okay, but uh, in the Buddhist sense, extreme compassion, not anger. Anger in, in, is never used f uh, as a definition for, for enlightened beings, for that, for, the energy, for that energy of extreme compassion, because there, we want to have a differentiation, because the motivating factor, the intent, what is the motivating factor? The reason why they are, the way they appear like that, the way they are, they are fierce looking, the way they express, and um, you know, like like when, um, for example, when an attained lama shouts, disciplines the student, purifies their karma by scolding, purifies. It is said that for a lama who who disciplines their student, it's like raffle mantras to purify the karma. Sometimes just a scolding can can avert obstacles, just a scolding, and. Um, that's for attained beings, lah. I, I I don't think our our scolding and our BFs, you know, BF is <laughs> it's a lingo we use a lot in um, Kachara to, to say that you know when we are angry we we you know we lash out sometimes. So um, okay, so let's let's go back to the the original point of the 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 the, the talk, which is. Um, I have a little bit more time, so I, I need to go into the, how we deal with it. Okay, so for, ang for anger, definitely what happened is we have, we, there's many ways to go about it, okay, to deal with angry, but the best way is to deal with the source. What's the source of our anger? I'm not talking of the usual, you know, when someone takes advantage of us, we get angry, or someone, you know, slaps us and we, we get irritated, or we get, you know, not the one off. I mean, as in the continuous, where we uh, small situations um, repeatedly make us irritated, angry, annoyed, and we lash back. Sometimes the trigger can be very small. That, that is the anger I'm talking about. And that is because it has been built up. So we have to go back in time and look at what is the cause of it. So to, to, to deal with it is to, ex to come to terms with it, come to acceptance of it. And come to and apply the Dharma. How do we apply the Dharma? We have to look at it with all fairness. We have to look at it from both sides of the of of. It, usually, we and when we're resentful, we always look at it from the the perspective of us. For example, when someone had hurt us very badly in the past, okay. In our mind that person is at fault because that person hurt us. Okay, but the Buddhist point of view is that on all fairness, we create the circumstances for it. And then you think, oh, but that's, but I didn't do anything. I was an innocent person, innocent player in this game. So, but there's karma involved. So when there's karma involved, you, we have, we definitely have created a course in the past. So it is important to come to all fairness and yes, maybe, maybe you believe in karma, maybe you don't believe in karma, whatever it is. But circumstances was planted before they create the situation there. So that's why actually it behooves us for people who uh, had difficult childhood, because there are people who had wonderful childhood. Where was the circumstances? You know, who created the circumstances? Was it an almighty figure? It is not. It is previous actions from previous lives. It gives you a, what we call this, an inferential logic. Inferential logic means what? It means that you, when you cannot see the fire, but you can see smoke. When you see smoke, automatically you think there must be a fire. So when you see that there are circumstances that we, were, we experienced something bad, it must be circumstances that were planted before. And if there was, you know, when we were very young, that means that was a previous life. So, you know, it, it, situations like this lead us in that way of thinking. So inferential logic is very important to, un, to come to terms with difficult childhood, difficult circumstances that we think we are the victim. We think that we are the innocent bystander, but we definitely have created a cause before because nothing in this universe has no cause for it spontaneous like that <laughs> nothing everything comes from causes and conditions all right um, 
So we have to come to terms with it. And we have to go into contemplation. We have to contemplate. And uh, Rinpoche's example of this is him. Um, for many years, Rinpoche had to grapple with uh, the resentment, the difficulty when he, when he was young of uh, being abused, physically beaten by his, uh, his stepmother. And until his guru told him, you have to call and apologize to your mother. Imagine if you were physically beaten up every other day or every single day for something you did wrong, for something small you did wrong, for something big you did wrong, you were beaten up. Small, big, whatever, something made up. And then you have to call to apologize to the person who beat, who, who, you know, who beat you up. So Furimuchi was like, I can't. <laughs> Initially, Rimuchi said he, 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 he was resistant. And then, but because his devotion to his teacher was so strong, his, his teachers told him the only way you can cut the karma is if you apologize. How does that work? It means he, Rimuchi has to come to forgiveness. Rimuchi has definitely forgiven, but I think it's for us to, it's, it's, Later on, Lirunji will eventually forgive or whatever it is. When maybe when he grow up or whatever, because Rimuji is that's Rimuji is who Rimuji is. But um, I think it was a lesson for later uh, for for his students for us to understand to come to terms with. You know, when we are in difficult situations, when we are with situation, we feel we are the we are we we are the victim. We have to cut the karma. We have to apologize. Not unless you apologize, but we have to let go. So for Rimachi at that moment, letting go was the key to cut the karma. So for some people, for some scenarios, it's not, it's not, it's not so much as for, uh, asking for forgiveness. Sometimes it's letting go. Because Rimachi at that time was very, very young. Very, very young. You know? So... That is one aspect of what LC was talking about, uh, acceptance. So for Rimuji to come to an acceptance of the abuse, of letting go of the abuse, he had to apologize. And Rimuji, although Rinpoche, the hurt was a lot, but Rimuji was able to do it out of devotion. So it's a matter of the person who is angry, the person who is disappointed, hurt, Rather, not disappointed, hurt very badly. Can they come to terms with it? How are they going to come to terms? They would, they would know. They would, over time, sometimes, so, so some, for many different people, it's different. You know, I'm just, this is one scenario of, you know, in terms of coming in terms of hurt and pain. For some people, it's, it's um, a lifetime of not taking responsibility of their actions, of being very self Oh, yeah, this is not I was talking about being people who are very self absorbed. I was building at this. Because there are some people I've noticed uh, uh, with Rimuji's guidance to come to, to understand people, people who are very callous for small things, very, very callous because they're very self-absorbed. They are always thinking about themselves. When they're always very thinking about themselves, what happens is they make a lot of important decisions callously and they disappoint a lot of people and they hurt a lot of people and eventually people's reaction to them make them angry. Yeah, people's reaction to them, uh, be disappointed at them, makes them angry, and they in turn become more ang also angry, and uh, they 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 get very touchy about people's uh, uh, how do I say people's comments about them, people's uh, opinion about them. I'm sorry, I I just saw some of my saliva <laughs> flew out. <laughs> You know, I'm just trying to stress the point. People's opinion about them. So when people who are very self-absorbed, who are very into themselves, you know, and then they make a lot of mistakes and they disappoint a lot of people because they're self-absorbed. What happens is they disappoint a lot of people and their reaction from the disappointment over the years will build up and they will get angry. If they do not take steps to step out of their self-absorption, all right. Ooh.
Elsie says, truly agree, okay? David, hi. When we were kids, our parents never spared the cane. How would this be viewed through the Dharmic lens? It was anger, no? Wrath from the parents. <laughs> perhaps not wrath, perhaps anger. There's a tinge of anger, but there's a whole lot of love. And uh, I, uh, I, this is conventionally called tough love. And usually, I don't know, from experience, as in asking, you know, talking to people, and uh, from Rimuchi's big experience, Rimuchi turned out all right. And um, I, I don't, I, I see the end result positive more than negative. So I, and I, but our parents are ordinary people, okay? So definitely, there's a level of anger. There's a, there's a measure. Of, there's a tiny measure of anger, but more love, concern, care you know, then anger. So the result comes out good. Because, you know, generally our parents, it's, it's natural because it's, you know, your own offspring. So they, your, your clear and concern is more than for any other person. So when they, when, they, when they discipline the child, when they do not spare the cane, as you call it, so then it will not, it, it, I, I see it as something positive. I see it as something good. And uh, this is something hotly debated in the West prior to this COVID thing, I, I think prior, like five years ago or something. I remember there was a huge debate in, a, in, in America about what they call this? Tiger parenting. I don't know whether you guys heard of it. Tiger parenting is where, because there, there's studies being sh that shows that in school, Asian, Asian kids fare academically better than Western kids. And then, so they zero in on the parenting of Asian parents and asian parents are the spare don't spare the what spare the rod don't spare the rod type <laughs> so they, they they they're fiercer they demand more from their kids and so they turn out more successful than western who say oh you just be who you are you know you take it as you you know so they the results show you know there's a debate in the West. So I don't know which way the debate went, but there, you know, there are books written out about it and all that. So when it comes to anger, I think there's a certain measure of anger, but more love, more care, more concern, because it's, it's about discipline. It's not so much about hurting, all right? Careless or careless? Um, I'm not sure in what reference is healing willing you say you ask this question care, careless or careless in reference to because I said a lot of things I could have mentioned I don't use that in it, the word callous as in C A L L O U S I know what it means but I don't usually use it that's um <laughs> I usually when I say careless it's usually care no care Careless. Okay. Huh? Oh, 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 okay, okay. I will... Um, I do have a little bit more to talk, but I have to end shortly. Perhaps um, I will answer your questions in the next session, which probably, because tomorrow it will be passed in around Sunday. Passing around, oh, I'll come on on Sunday. So I'll come on and talk a little bit more about this in more detail and uh, answer your questions if you have, because it's quite interesting, isn't it? Because anger and aggression is in all of us. And uh, if we do not keep tabs with our anger, it can grow. And if we do not control it, we will scare people away and we will ruin our merits, as you said in the, in the text. There's a lot of things. There's a Dharma, Dharma angle to it I haven't, have not touched yet. So... Um, I will continue on because um, we have another program after this that it's, um, no, I mean, as in, I just, my time is up. Lah. All right. Um, thank you very much. I'll do a quick dedication. Jeju Sensho Rinpoche, Maki Panangyushi, Keba Yama Mi Payang, Go Neko to Power Show, Tony Tonga Rinpoche, Maki Panangyushi, Keba Yama Mi Payang, Go Neko to Power Show, Daso Genesa Pagiwadi, Tana Droa Gunla Kampada, Jeba Jazo Lozo and Draba, Tamping Guru in the Sashi Show, Keba Kundu Yana Lamada, Jemi Choki Palo Long Chaching, Sada Langi on Dena Choni, Doji Changi Go Pang Yoto Show, Gewa Di Yutuda, Lama Sangi Chuni, Chua Chikan Malupa de Sala Kubasho, Shuja Bosongaba, Chosonam, Pewala, Gikijama Jawadan, Tony Malusan Show, 
Dadan Shagir to Zundan, Jewish Latin, Yawa Los on Drapari, Tampari Vagus, Nimo Della Santella, Nemigo in Delection, Yasin Tatu Della Pell, Contrason Gilo, Contraso in Motoso, Contrason Chashi Show, Jason Lamacus or Abdunchi, Nam Kachili Juki Kibadan, Los on Tabi Jumis Sansuki, Jumis Tatu Negus, Gangri Rave, Poishing Gun, Penan Dewa Malukan in a Cheris, one Tenzin Gasui, Shapi City Badu Dan Guji, Hong Tombing or Drumalupa, Dene Dalla Soto, Conan Tembalo, Geba Suji, Shook Dan, so. Thank you very much and good night. See you on Sunday, folks. Tomorrow will be Pastor Nara coming on at 9 o'clock.